Hello, Jeff Zwerink here with Give and Take Again, and this is the segment of our show where we explore scientific ideas to help equip you to be confident in the Christian faith so that you can go out and share with others. Today I'm joined by Hugh Ross, my good friend and colleague, and we're going to discuss what extreme life here on Earth tells us about life in the universe. Hugh, it's good to have you here today. Well, thank you. You know, Hugh, this is something I've found that people have speculated and thought and wondered about life out in the universe for as long as I can remember. I remember reading about stuff about life on Mars and other things that uh, this idea just seems to fascinate people. And it's very difficult to go out and look, but we do have the capacity to investigate what kind of life's here on Earth. And I know you've written a, a recent blog article about life in the Atacama Desert. I just thought it'd be good to discuss that, what the findings were, and what sort of implications it has for the Christian faith. So can well, you kind of describe a little bit, yeah. what did they find and what are we looking at there? Well, what's interesting about the surface of the Earth, there is no more life-unfriendly place than the high altitude Atacama Desert. So, so high altitude, what are we talking there? Like 17,000 feet. Okay, so not a lot of oxygen up there. This is a place where it never rains. Never rains. <laughs> so you don't, have, you don't have much oxygen and it basically never rains. That's why astronomers are excited about that place. Well, astronomers <laughs> are weird folks, but it does make for good, a good telescope. Uh, but yeah, locations. I mean, if you've ever been there, I mean, there's nothing growing. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's just totally lifeless. Uh, but yeah, what got reported recently in the scientific literature is they actually found some microbes that were surviving there. Now, not well, but they were surviving there so, in a place where we thought it was impossible for life to exist. So is it, was there a motivation for going and looking? Was it just to see if it was there or was there some, some other motivation? Well, the other motivation was, okay, uh, we know that conditions are much harsher, for example, on Mars. Mm -hmm. And so if we can find life existing in the high altitude Atacama Desert, maybe we got a shot of life actually being able to survive at an even more uh, you know, uh, remote place, uh, Mars. And mm -hmm. so that was the motivation. And also just trying to understand the, the range of life here on planet Earth. So there was multiple mm -hmm. motivations. So what did, what did they find? I mean, what were they looking for and what did they find? Well, they were looking for microbes mm -hmm. uh, that were actually able to live under those extreme conditions. And what they basically found were microbes that would go into a hyper dormant state. Okay. I mean, think of hibernation. Mm -hmm. But these are microbes that are designed to hibernate in a manner where basically they shut down all life functions. You can't even tell they're alive. I mean, it's a really amazing design that they're able to hibernate to that degree uh, where they can literally survive uh, without oxygen, uh, without water um, and under extreme cold. And yet when a little bit of water comes, uh, a little bit of warm temperature, they can come back to life. And so the discovery was we didn't really know whether microbes could hibernate uh, to that extreme degree and be able to come back to life. The other thing they discovered was, you know, how the water got there. I mean, this is a place where it doesn't rain but occasionally you get a fog that comes in because it's not far from the ocean. Mm -hmm. We're talking Northern Chile. Right. And so there are occasional weather patterns where a little bit of a fog will come in and uh, deposit a tiny amount of water, but these microbes are actually able to take advantage of that tiny amount of water, uh, spring uh, out of hibernation. We're not talking long. They go back into hibernation pretty quickly. Well, so, so that's a question I have. Uh, you know, so obviously a little bit of water comes in. Does it take much? How, is there any uh, measure of how quickly the life kind of took action and how quickly it would Very quick. dormancy? What, what does quickly mean? Within we, days. Within days, okay. <laughs> so this is, this is really an area where there's very very little water, the occasional water that comes in. So, you know, kind of a very fraction, small fraction of the amount of time, the life is there, but most of the time it's just sitting dormant. But when the conditions arise, it actually takes advantage and starts living, if you will. Yeah, and we see that elsewhere on Earth. This is just the most extreme example of a microbe being able to basically shut down all life functions. And when a tiny amount of water comes by, they can pop back out. You know, that, that strikes me almost like uh, something that's designed to do that. I mean, you, know, you look at the Atacama Desert, it's a pretty hostile environment. If you just take the run-of-the-mill life throughout the rest of the Earth, it's going to perish pretty quickly there. But, you know, like other extremophiles that live in very bizarre conditions, it seems like they're almost designed to live in this type of environment. 
Well, Jeff, many years ago, a group of astronomers published a paper saying extremophiles are irrelevant to the origin of life, making the point that when you look at these extremophiles, and this is one of the most extreme mm -hmm. life forms that have ever been discovered, is you see incredible design built in to enable that microbe to exist under those extremely harsh conditions. And so the reason why they conclude that this is irrelevant to the origin of life is that the level of design you need to make one of these mm -hmm. uh, organisms from scratch is orders of magnitude more complex than what we call a mesophile. Uh, this kind a, of more ordinary life. A microbe will. that is able to survive under optimal conditions right, rather okay. than extreme conditions. Well, th this, this again, you just look at what's going on there. You're up in the high desert, which means the radiation exposure is a little bit more. You're right. not very active, so you're not replenishing cosmic ray damage, those sorts of things. There's very little water. I think it's also rather salty up there. Yes. Yet these and these organisms, when the time arises and the water's there, they actually seem to flourish to the best life can flourish in a, in a pretty hostile environment. Yeah, for a brief period of time. <laughs> but, it, but it really does seem remarkable in the design that even the radiation doesn't cause them to degrade enough that they can't flourish. Well, what we see in these extremophiles, Jeff, is that they have designs built in to uh, repair damage mm -hmm. from the extreme conditions. So there's much more complexity in the biochemistry of these uh, uh, creatures because they have to constantly repair the damage that is occurring. And so, in fact, for some of the extreme of files, most of the energy goes towards damage control. Right. So, a quick question. We're kind of coming up on the end of the, the segment here, but what do you think this has to say about life elsewhere in the universe? Uh, you know, we're finding pretty extreme life. Might we find life somewhere else in the universe? Well, again, I refer to this uh, article, um, extreme of files are irrelevant to the origin of life, mm -hmm. is that the reason why extremophiles can do so well on planet Earth is because of the abundance of mesophiles. Okay. And so they basically depend on all this, what we call ordinary life, in order to be able to survive. Mm -hmm. And so I've been writing articles to the point saying, you know, just because we find extreme life on Earth doesn't mean that life is abundant elsewhere in the universe because of the incredible... Uh, in other words, if you're not finding mesophiles, you're not going to find the extremophiles. You know, it really is an amazing thing. When we look around Earth, there is just an abundance of life. There's a complexity of life. And everywhere that it, people thought there could be life, we found life existing. And even in places we didn't think life could exist, we found life there. And it has a design and a complexity that allows the life to thrive in an environment that looks like it ought to kill it. And what that sells to me is that when we look at life, it looks like it's designed to be here, and it points to there being a creator. And we're going to find lots of fascinating life out there. And it just gives us more evidence that there's a creator behind it all, that we get to know the creator, and we can go out and tell others about that creator. So let's go share.